Hello, in this video I'm gonna discuss how to draw a Bode diagram of passive vibration damping. So this uh, is a, an image of passive vibration damping. Uh, a wheel is for example following a certain path which causes a vibration in a construction in a mass through a spring and a damper. So the this is called passive because the environment puts this vibration on the mass. Whereas here you have an active vibration damping where a machine uh, with a mass M actually vibrates, so it causes the vibration itself, and it then causes a certain force on the outside world. So uh, this force is caused via a spring and a damper. So in, in this video I'm gonna draw a Bode diagram of this situation, the passive vibration damping with this free website that you see over here. It's a website that you can um, use to simulate a spring, a mass and a damper. So here I've got a free body diagram of this situation, the, the passive vibration damping, and you should always draw a free body diagram in statics and in dynamics. But the only difference is in dynamics you also have to draw a kinematic schedule, you see it over here. It's the mass multiplied by the acceleration in the y direction in, uh, in this case. So you have got a, a spring constant and a damping constant, and this is the, the free body diagram included with the kinematic schedule and in dynamics then what you do is uh, just add all the arrows of the free body diagram so the, the blue ones over here and put them equal to the kinematic schedule which is the, the red arrow over here so that's uh, what I've done on the next page when you uh, add all the forces inside this problem you get this equation and you should put that equal to the kinematic schedule which is the mass multiplied by the acceleration so that and then you get this equation over here and after doing a Laplace transform in the easy way so the easy way is just to uh, change every dot so every uh, differentiation above a variable to a, a value of s uh, that's the simple version of course there's a, a lot of advanced mathematics going going on behind that but this is the simple version of the Laplace transform and then you get uh, the transfer function which is the output divided by the input which will then deliver this uh, formula over here, this equation and this happens to, to be the exact same equation as it is for the active vibration damping but there the, the input and output are forces whereas here the input and output are distances so this is what I'm expecting to get I'm expecting to get something along the, the green line in the, the Bode diagram which uh, says that in the beginning there is a, a transfer of 1 and at the end there's a transfer of 0 and in between the tra transfer function follows the green line and this is a plot from uh, MATLAB it also shows the Bode diagram of the, the, the phase shift and uh, I'm, I'm gonna see that later in the animation as well so this is what, uh, is what I'm expecting to get and now I'll uh, switch over to Excel I've already prepared a little calculation sheet in which I calculate the natural frequency of this problem and I've done it here in uh, Hertz and this one is the, the value in radians per second so here you see the formula of natural frequency it's the square root of the spring constant divided by the mass so I've, uh, I've got a case here for a student number of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and I take uh, the last digit as the mass and I add 1 to never get a value of zero and then I divide by two because the website that I'm gonna switch over to now it, it doesn't allow you to take a mass higher than five and also not a spring uh, not a damping constant higher than five Newton meter per second so that's why uh, to to create a, a task for students I've added one and divided by two to get a, a range of zero to five maximum so I can use this website so I've calculated the natural frequency with the, the formula for that and now I'm going to do an experiment so I'm going to use the website with a maximum input and the mass that I've got over here and a spring constant that I've got over here so mass of 4 kilogram, spring constant of 66 and a damping constant of 2.5 then I can add a, a ruler to my problem so I can start measuring and I want to have the maximum amplitude to get the, the most uh, most clear readings, uh, most clear measurements actually. So now I'm gonna switch this uh, problem on and the first thing I'm gonna do is 
measure here the distance that that is uh, corresponding to uh, an amplitude of two centimeters so I'm gonna always measure the top of a, a mass and then measure the distance it traveled and when I add my ruler bar over here I see that four millimeters on this ruler bar corresponds to two centimeters as amplitude so it's a it's a strange ruler bar but I just have to live with that so here I see that an input of two centimeters uh, corresponds to uh, four millimeters on this ruler bar so to to get the, the right value of the amplitude of the mass I'll always have to divide it by two and then put it in centimeters to to get the same result so now I'm gonna start my measurements at uh, the first situation I've, I've chosen five frequency one is exactly in the natural frequency of this problem and two are below and two are above to get a, a good Bode diagram so I, I'll start off with the 0.4 Hertz so put 0.4 over here and then enter you see the button here rotating and now I'm gonna measure what the output is gonna be and then uh, put that in my Bode diagram so I'm gonna actually just uh, create a Bode diagram with the help of this free website so put it on top of the moving mass the input is the the frequency that I've got over here of 0 0.4 Hertz uh, and the movement over here the output is the movement of this mass so I'm almost there I have to wait until it's stabilized and then put it in the graph with the frequency on the on the horizontal axis so now I see six six millimeters and I have to then divide that by two six millimeters divided by two to get the value in centimeters so I'm gonna do that for all the values over here and uh, so that I'll uh, be able to divide every value that I get by two so I don't need to do that every time and then I'm gonna measure the value of 0 0.55 so 0 0.55 and see what happens then I see more movement in the mass which is to be expected because we're getting closer to the natural frequency so there should be more movement as, a, as output put it on the right uh, scale this one a bit to the top I have to always wait until the problem has settled so it's come to a, a steady, uh, steady situation and I see then here a value of 12 and a half 12 and a half so this one should be 12.5 divided by 2 to get the output in centimeters then I'm going to go to the natural frequency we're expecting the the biggest output over there so 0 0.65 Hertz and I see the mass is moving more right now which is a good sign Put it on, the, on the bottom of the movement here and the top of the movement over there wait for the steady situation this one should be a little bit lower so yeah, now I'm roughly there, and I see 25.5. So this one is 25.5 uh, divided by two, which corresponds to 12.75 centimeters. Then I need to go to 0 0.8 hertz, and then we're expecting less output again. And luckily, it also happens that way. So put a little bit lower this one yeah, this one a bit higher wait for the steady, steady situation again and now I'm there I think roughly and then this is uh, 0 0.65 so of 6.5 millimeters so here I should have 6.5 divided by 2 and then the last measurement is at 1 Hertz and it should be less again the movement of the mass so wait until we reach the steady situation and then measure how much the distance is it's roughly three millimeters so this one is uh, three divided by two to get it in centimeters is 1.5 centimeters now I've got the, the values over here uh, so uh, this is the, the transfer function it's the output divided by the input so 3 divided by 2 that's that's a transfer function the the output 
that the mass travels divided by the input that the, the base travels. And that's my transfer function. So here I've got uh, all the values output divided by input, which is transfer function h. Here I've got all the values, so I'll copy and paste that over here. I've already, uh, I should take this paste value. I've already set up this graph with uh, the bottom over here. So here with the this graph I took. And this is my uh, my Bode plot that I've I've measured with an experiment. So as a last step, I'm gonna check this with help of MATLAB. So this is my transfer function. It's the the damping constant over here, spring constant over here, and below the denominator we have the mass damping constant and spring constant as well. So and when I go to MATLAB and put this transfer function inside and then take uh, the LTI view command which is a Laplace transfer interactive viewer then I can check that I get the same graph as I just got by my measurements so import the transfer function that I defined this is the step response for this problem but I don't want to see that I want to see the Bode plot and now I don't get exactly this graph but it's because of the scales this one is logarithmical I want to change that so here I can double click this graph to get the units to uh, Hertz because that's what I used in Excel I want a linear scale and the magnitude should be absolute to, to get similar graphs and then I want to plot the same range that I see over here so it's from uh, 0 0.1 to 1.5 roughly and now here I see uh, when I make this a bit smaller I see here that this graph here that I've got in Excel really resembles this graph that I've got here in, uh, in MATLAB so that means that I can trust my values uh, it, it looks very similar and I can also look at the phase shift as a, a last thing to look at so the phase shift in the beginning is zero and I can see that in the in in this website as well when I take a low frequency I need to wait until the the movement settles the movement of this mouse then I can see that the phase shift is indeed zero because when this uh, this input goes up the mass goes up as well so there's no phase shift and when I go to higher frequencies I get a phase shift of uh, almost 180 degrees almost one minus 180 degrees so almost exactly out of phase so I can see that as well when I increase the frequency over here it should start to get out of phase which means that when at the moment that this input goes up the mass should go down and roughly when it stabilizes roughly at this moment I don't need my ruler now anymore now I can already see that this actually happening so when this one goes up the blue one goes down so I've also seen that this phase shift happens over here but that's not what I checked with Excel with Excel I just checked the magnitude of the transfer function so that was uh, what I wanted to show for this experiment thanks for watching